everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a screenwriter's rant on a movie called Override. Uh, this is a crime sci-fi thriller movie. It's billed, at, billed as. Uh, and it takes place in this house in the middle of the desert. And it's about this woman who is the perfect housewife. And she lives in a not-too-distant future. And she's the perfect partner, the perfect housewife to this guy. I don't know, this guy. And she's the perfect lover. She's perfect everything. But she's uh, a robot or an android. Um, I think a robot. Maybe a cybernetic creature. I'm not sure. Because they every night they put this gadget doohickey on her head. <laughs> and uh, this guy uh, plays her husband. And uh, they... They, it's like the Truman Show. They also have a TV show based on her. And uh, is that Dax Shepard? It kind of looks like him. Not sure if that's him or not. Looks, looks, he looks a little off to be Dax Shepard. Um, this guy kind of looks like, um, you know, remember, remember on uh, Futurama when Fry goes back in time and he has to, oh Lars, he, he has to reinvent himself as Lars and then come back to the future again as an older guy who seduces uh, Leela. Yeah, he kind of looks like Lars. So the, the, the weird plot of this movie is the son of the president then uh, somehow gains access to the TV show and becomes one of the characters and he tries to free her because he's being paid to, which is, is such a weird plot. Why would you involve the president's son in this plot? Like, there's so much material already. When you have a robot housewife, you know, you could do a whole drama about what it means to be human and, you know, whether or not she's real and whether or not it matters. But instead, it's this weird sort of I, it's a thriller, I guess. But it doesn't feel very thrilling because there's... There's just too much going on. There's the TV show. There's uh, uh, the fact that she's kind of a robot or an android. And then the president's got to be involved. So she ends up taking him hostage. <laughs> and and she knows about the TV show. And here, here she is. She like conks him on the head with a pan. There he is bleeding. Very poor poor special effects blood in my view that doesn't look like a real wound it, it doesn't look like something would happen if you got hit by a frying pan anyway um but i'll tell you the lead actress is very attractive so they did do some good casting um and she seems to be pretty good uh in in the lead role um but uh the best part about this is uh, Superman plays the president. See, there she took off her skin. It's it's a little bit, it, it seems like it's stealing from uh, the demon with the glass hand, which, for those of you who don't know, is Harlan Ellison's, uh, I believe it's a short story or an Outer Limits story. And then that was why he sued James Cameron over Terminator, apparently, uh, because it was sort of a combination of that and a story he did called Soldier or Trooper. But, um, so, let me see if I can find the president. Luke Goss. Uh, the president is Dean Cain. And there's all sorts of scenes. See, like, yeah, his name's in the credit. Um, yeah, it's like, you got scenes of her running away. I mean, it would just be an interesting enough story if you had a robot that decided she didn't want to be a housewife anymore and then wanted to leave and then the guy who bought her was just like you can't leave you're my wife or I paid lots of money for you and she was just like but I want to see the world and you're not letting me like that in and of itself would be enough instead they I feel like they've overdone this one you know there's too many elements here directed by Richard Colton also written by Richard Colton um let's see so that uh, I don't see a time when, when the movie's out. Let me see if I can find. Let's show you. There's Dean Kane. There he is. Superman as the president. And this is supposed to be the White House, I guess. It kind of doesn't look like the White 
House, though. That is not the White House. That is, uh, I don't know what that is. That's not the White House. That is way too sparse for a shot in the White House. I mean, Dean Cain, he can look presidential, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, you know, he he cuts a cuts a figure and he, he's wearing an expensive suit, but uh, this this background just looks like a hotel. So this is probably a, a, a low budget movie, um, but it's 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 kind of interesting. I mean. Maybe the concepts come together, but I think there are too many. If I were going to drop anything, I would have to drop the Dean Cain part of the story, right? Uh, or the TV show, one or the other, but both. I would actually drop both and just make it about a guy who had a robot wife and then that she decides that she doesn't want to be his wife anymore or she decides there's more to life and starts to discover life and he's just like shelting her her because uh he's selfish and doesn't really love her just uses her you know you could do a lot with that it just it seems like they're just throwing a ton of elements in here <laughs> and like none of them are really gonna pay off like they should because once you involve the president and a, and a tv show i mean that's pretty big right i mean it should be i mean i don't want to get political in this one but um you know, it should, you, the movie logic of it would be, oh man, this is like the biggest news story in the world. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel that way in the trailer. It just feels like they're like, oh, there's a, there's a robot wife. Oh, there's the president. Oh, it's a TV show. Like, I don't know if those will integrate well. Doesn't feel like it from this trailer. But then again, might be the cut of the trailer. So it's called the Override. I guess that has something to do with overriding the, the robot brain. Uh, and I guess it comes out this year. Crime sci-fi thriller movie. Yeah. It's too many. 